Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the new home of Gentlemen's Combatives. I am joining you today to bring you the second part of the David Moore interview. So let's hear about his impending bout up against Satoshi Hasegawa at the Pancras Neo Blood Tournament of 1997. Did you expect to be brought back for the Neo Blood Tournament in 1997? Which was no. the second part. No? Not whatsoever. <laughs> no. Um... I thought that you know maybe we might get a, another go because um, that was only about I think a couple of months, mm. not even that after the, my first fight. Um, so yeah, very surprising. Uh, so that was through Bob Buckland again. Yes, that was through Bob. Um, he negotiated uh, for us to come back over, um, which was great. So yeah, we, he got us over there, which is fantastic. Then I'll, we'll talk about that later. But that uh, that relationship went down south after that. But um, yeah, we got over for that fight. Fair enough. Uh, so, what did you think of Satoshi Hasegawa? Did you have much to, given that this was your second time there, did you have any time to research and look into him, or was it straight back into it again? Yeah, look, uh, my, my my overseas guy from Pancras, he sent a couple of videos over um, of Hasegawa, just a couple of fights. So, I was able to have a bit of a look at those um, previously. Um, which gave me a little bit of an insight to a few different things, but um, I figured I'll, I'll just do my own game plan and see see how he goes. So he was quite a, a fast, quick guy. I had a, probably a good ten kilos on him in weight. Mm. I reckon maybe maybe a little bit more. Um, he was quite a quite a quick sort of a fella, and he caught me out a couple of times um, in the uh, in the fight, um, which is unfortunate, but just the way it goes. How's it going? So, thank you very much, David Moore. As we heard, he'd actually got a little bit of video on his opponent and actually kind of knew what he was doing when he coming into this fight, which is, you know, the least you can normally expect of a mixed martial arts in the fight in these days. But, yeah. Such were things in the time of 1996. And here he is taking on Satoshi Hasegawa in the first fight of the Pancras 1997 Neo Blood Tournament. Hasegawa's had a bit of an interesting run. Hasn't done super well since he made his debut last year. But we'll see how he goes today. Referee just going over the rules again. The boys have shaken hands and they are ready to go. All right, here we go. Effect inside low kick from David. A little tapping outside low kick. Sort of sits back. A little bit tentative from the looks of these looks of things. Struggling to get in. Uh, pretty rough shot from Satoshi Hasegawa, but he's managed to get double underhooks. Will he be able to get a clinch takedown? Yep, manages to sweep out the leg. Well done. Ends up in top side control. I'll see David's bottom game, which was pretty good from last time, if I remember correctly. Nice empty half here. Framing on the face and hips of Satoshi Hasegawa. He's trying to force down on his arm, probably trying to set up for a double wrist lock. David pulling free from that one. Leaving his arm over the top of the head. Oh, uh, nearly got the headlock sweep there. So yeah, arm over the top of the head. These days, a bit of a faux pas in grappling because you're leaving yourself open for the Von Flu, but... Well, Von Flu slash OSP choke. But less of a big deal back then. Knee on belly briefly from Satoshi Asagawa. David tries to pick up a single, gets cross-faced and stuck on the bottom still. Reverie stands him up. It's been a while since I've watched any Pancrase. I've uh, been uh, busy doing some highlight videos and that sort of thing, so I was thinking that's a little bit faster than I remembered. You know, it's Pancrase. They were actually super quick on the stand ups, comparatively, especially compared to modern day MMA. Double unders from Satoshi Hasegawa. A couple of attempted takedowns here. David doing an alright job of stalling them. Oh, nice duck out though to the back from Hasegawa. David reaching back for the legs here, separates the grips. Oh, nice dumping takedown from Satoshi Hasegawa, and that looks to have hurt uh, David, like he's doing something weird with his arm there. And he's making an ugly looking face, and he's got a uh, 
Top hammerlock on the other other arm. What was that? That was a like. I want to call it a pump handle takedown, but it didn't have the arm all the way through. But it was still a very nice uh, dumping single leg and just threw David down right on the point of his shoulder and, from the looks of things, has done something nasty to it. He's defending the uh, the armbar on the other arm quite well, but yeah, you can tell the one that is currently uh, framing on the hips of Satoshi Hasegawa is not in a good way. He's defending the uh, double wrist lock pretty well. As a guy was spun all the way around to attack the armbar on the other side. Referee suggesting that perhaps David was going for the escape there. Oh, and he's managed to reef his elbow free and pop out and he's come out on top. And uh, he's making some odd faces. <laughs> Trying to do something with that arm and he just can barely move it. Oh, ooh. Uh, so I already know what's wrong with it. And, uh, because, of course, I was in the interview, and, uh, <laughs> just the way it was held there, that, the, the, yeah, that, that arm is not in a good way. <laughs> so, uh, he's being sent over to the ring doctor, moving it around. Oh, you, you can definitely see it there. Oh. <laughs> so I'll leave it for the man himself to uh, describe exactly what's wrong with his shoulder, but from this angle right here, you can see exactly what's wrong with it. If you know what you're looking for, just the way everything is all not attaching the way it's supposed to. <laughs> But uh, he's just he's just saying he's going to go back out there. He's trying to move it around. <laughs> Alright, but props to him. Uh, braver man than I am. Bigger balls than I have. Going out there with a absolutely fucked arm. Just got, ooh, he's gotten whacked twice really hard by... Uh, Satoshi Hasegawa, because he's got no guard on that side now, because he can't get his arm up high enough to uh, defend his head. Hasegawa throwing another one. Oh, he's turned away, getting smacked a lot, and he's got double overs. Can barely grip. Oh, man, just get to the takedown, though. Yeah. Inside rip, I think. Couldn't see the legs, but that was what I saw. Hasegawa stiff arming away. Trying to work on the uninjured arm, which is, you know, pleasant. Oh, you can see how weak it is. Like, Hasegawa's really got barely any grip on it, and he can... Yeah, it can't be pulled back. Oh, interesting lock here from uh, Hasegawa there. Just sort of a double wrist lock sort of form, but yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed uh, David Moore's second fight in Pancrase. Uh, here comes the referee with the mystical Resident Evil spray. Uh, and he's going to go out the back and <laughs> have a chat to everybody else and hang out for the rest of the event. But we will hear his thoughts on the match. Coming up right now. Yeah, uh, in that one, we can see your shoulder gets quite badly hurt. Was that something you went into the fight with, or did it happen during the uh, match? Yeah, so that uh, that actually happened during the match. I've never had any shoulder injuries at all whatsoever. So he spun in behind me um, and got down and was, was tucked in behind, and I was pretty slow. Look, I actually had a bit of food poisoning from, from the day earlier, so I was a little bit flat. My energy levels were down and I wasn't very responsive. So I was sort of sitting there, I was having a bit of a play and I was ducking my hand underneath to see if there was a leg. I was looking and rolling under and going for a leg bar. So anyhow, he's picked me up and he's dumped me and uh, landed on my elbow. And instantly I knew there was an issue. I thought, geez, maybe I've jarred my shoulder. Um, and I was carrying on a bit actually. I thought, geez, this is really starting to hurt because I could move it forward and back. But to try to raise laterally, my, my shoulder was pretty much um, giving me grief. I didn't realise until after the fight um, that I'd actually totally dislocated the shoulder. So to the anterior part, my, my shoulder was, was out. Um, mm. I'd never had a dislocation before, so I'd never really had experienced that. I was in a fair bit of pain, but I figured, shit, I've flown 10,000 Ks. So I'm not going to stop because I've got a bit of a sore shoulder. Um, so when we were rolling around on the ground, he was on top and controlling me. And, and um, like what you are saying with Baz in the previous one, I was grunting and grinding a fair bit. This thing was giving me a... A fair bit of, fair bit of grief. Um, somehow, I was able to get out 
can get on top. So I was underneath for a good minute or so, minute and a half. Uh, he's trying to finish me off, do whatever it might be. I'm carrying on like a bit of a bit of a kid. Happen to roll over, get on top, and I'm still groaning and grunting. And that's when the referee stopped the fight. And then I got to go see the doctor. So they didn't want to do it while Hasegara was on top and possibly looking to get mm. finished. But as soon as I got on top in a controlling position, the fight stopped. So anyhow, I got assessed by the uh, by the ref. Um, he was checking me out, and I was able to move my arm back and forth. I go, no, 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 I'm all good. I could do this, but I couldn't raise it up to the side terribly much. And they didn't pick up on it at the time, the, the, the dislocation which had popped down. So they allowed me to con- continue to fight. And I remember uh, looking across when we stood, I stood in front of Hasegawa and I, I put my arm up and my arm wouldn't go up to my chin at all and it was dropped down and his head sort of tilted a little bit. Oh, I think he realised I've got no guard. Hmm. And, um, and he started swinging. So I just charged him uh, to, to try to get him onto the ground and I figured if I just get him on top, get on top and see what I can do, um, but I went straight into his guard because I was I was uh, I was carrying on a bit, and then he actually uh, put like a kim- or put a kimura on my, on my sore shoulder, and uh, that was it. Mm. Good night, R.A. So the person who just going back on that, the person who picked up and we're back in the change rooms, and the doctors are checking me out. It was Baz was in the background. He was supposed to have fought um, a fight, or I don't. It was an exhibition fight, and that got cancelled. He was in the back having a few beers, and he turned around and said, "Hey, Dave." look at me and he turned around he goes you've got a dislocated shoulder he said have a look and i looked in the mirror and it was a good couple of inches had dropped and then all the doctors went oh shit okay fair enough and that's when they decided they realized it was dislocated i had to go to hospital get it put back in so yeah it's funny because the only person who picked up on it was the pit uh, the pissed dutch bloke so mm. that's right uh it seems that Basrun spent his time in japan either tanked or fighting people uh, <laughs> there was no in between <laughs> Sometimes both. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so, again, did you spend any time at the Pancras Dojo after that or once again straight back home, straight back into it? Yeah, with that one, because I had that injury, it was actually a, an afternoon um, tournament and then the evening, so mm. there was, there was a, a break. Um, it was funny because I had this dislocated shoulder. They wouldn't take me to the hospital because just in case there were other injuries and mm. then they wanted to, I don't know, save on taxis or whatever it is. So yeah, I didn't get to the hospital for three hours. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So I was there for three hours. I go, what am I going to do? And Baz is having a beer and uh, Lisa's having a beer. I'm oh, stuff it. I'll have a couple of beers as well. So that was great until I got to the hospital and everything had seized up and everything had tightened up. And uh, then it took them a good hour or so to relocate it. Mm-hmm. And I was, yeah, that was uh, pretty painful. So I didn't feel like heading on out afterwards. After that, I was in a, in a fair bit of um, fair bit of pain. So, yeah. Uh, fair enough. So between that and your final appearance in Pancras, there was a two-year gap. Uh, did they just not yep. call you back, or what led to that? So this is where the relationship with Bob, my original manager, broke down. Um, so he was telling me uh, that there was no interest um, in me with the fighting. Um, he's trying to do his best. Um, he's he, he wants to get get back um and then i actually called up otata otoya otate um i sent him a, actually a birthday card and i said uh, happy birthday mate and he goes oh great to hear from you how you're going and we got this conversation going and he basically filled me in that bob mm. had uh wanted to double my appearance um to go back over there so we're getting about uh, 1800 bucks american to go over he wanted me to get three and a half thousand dollars american but he, he was going to keep the balance and pay me that original, you know, that out of it. And um, and then, yeah, so Otade's telling me that. And I'm like, well, I've got no idea, mate. He said, we've been trying to get you back over for a year. I said, I've been told that you guys weren't interested at all. He goes, no, 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 no. I said, the, the, the audience, you know, love the fight that you, love the fact that you fought with a busted arm, a busted shoulder. You know, you, you, you performed really well against uh, Shibia. So I spoke to Bob. And Bob denied it. And anyhow, I was able to get out of the contract. And that took probably a good four or five months worth of back and forth to get out of the contract. And then I went over there representing myself, if you want to call it that, for that, that third fight. So that's why there was that long two-year period. And in that time, I figured, oh, well, that's done and dusted. You know, I'll just keep on doing my, my grappling or whatever it is. So I wasn't really training for Pancras or anything else like that. So, yeah. Uh, so, so you were just competing in jiu-jitsu and that sort of thing in that middle that middle period no mixed martial arts no yeah shoot fighting or no or oh i just dabbled 
just dabbled in it a little bit, uh, a little bit, of, a little bit of sparring, but there wasn't training specifically to get into the mixed martial arts. Um, so yeah, I thought, well, you know what, um, had a good time, um, but it looks like that window may have closed. Mm. Unbeknownst to me, being you know uh, naive, you know, I've got a promoter who was, as I said, pretty dodgy, mm. um, was trying to his pockets full of cash. So he'd also um, taken Stan Longanides and Sam Greco oh. over to America, to Japan. And uh, he was associated with them. And they got out of that situation quickly. I had a chat to Sam a couple of years later. Uh, we, we got through a mutual friend. We were talking. And he goes, yeah, no, Bob's, Bob's dodgy as. So I found that out. So, yeah. So thank you very much for your thoughts there, David Moore. And as we heard, it will be a little while before he shows up in Pancras again. But worry not, I will do his match uh, well ahead of the end when we get to that event in terms of our current Pancras chronology. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed his match, I hope you enjoyed his uh, thoughts on his time in Pancras, and I hope you all tune in next time.